Hello everyone, today I'm going to be making a small video on a few quality of life things. Uh, I'm going to be going over some loop beam help, how to track or to uh, it disable tracking in game, um, one of the ways to prevent luring and a few other things. Um, these are things that various clan mates have shown me and have helped me out in the game and I'm just going to keep adding to that list as people to show me more. Anything that can help us will only benefit the entirety of the clan if we get that information and can make small guides about it or things like that. We don't all have uh, the knowledge that some people don't know these things and I'm just going to try to get some of the ones that I've noticed in the past week in a short video. The first thing I'm going to do is we're going to go up here to the settings tab. Everyone's screen might look a little different, especially if you don't know what some of these tabs up here are, which I'm going to show you how to do today as well. The first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to click on the settings tab. I'm going to go to the settings bar here and we're going to open up the actual main settings interface. When this comes up, the first thing we're going to get into because it's the easiest one is the ribbon bar. If you slide over here to this tab, it's called ribbon. If you click on it, you can actually customize your ribbon that is up here. This is called your ribbon bar if you were unaware. So uh, all you really have to do is take any of the types of spell books or graphs, friends list, anything like that. Throw it in here and when you exit out of it, this will update with all of those. Now depending on how big your bar is, like I only keep mine at 8, you can add it to have all of those extra ones, but you will have to make this bar longer or wider or whatever you have or prefer. Um, I'm going to go back to my main bar and use that. That's the basic ribbon bar. It's super simple. Basically, if you want to, you know, have uh, your yak track or your quests and random things like that, the things you want that matter to you, throw them in there. Anything you don't want, take them out and you're all set. Um, super simple, drag, drop, exit, done. Whenever you're done, hit this little edit button and you can cycle through the ones that you have selected and the ones that RuneScape has as a preset. Now that we've gone over the ribbon system, we're going to go ahead and do uh, the anti-luring because in my opinion this is very, very, very useful. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to gameplay. Then down here at message and social, we're going to click on that. Down here in the Accept Aid tab, there is a Tele Other option for spells and teleport assistance. Make sure that this is set to nobody. You do not want Tele Other on. A lot of people will go somewhere where people are doing skilling or training on combat dummies, and they will auto Tele the people into the wilderness. Then they'll teleport themselves into the wilderness and murder your ass. So, please turn this off it will hugely prevent you from having a lot of issues if you do run into those people. Um, I have not seen someone do the telly other thing in my entire time back up until double XP. While I was standing at the double XP World 84 at Portables, there was multiple people complaining that people were trying to telly them to the wilderness. Please be careful of this. If you get teleported to the wilderness and you do get a skull because you have attacked them back, you will lose everything on your person. If you do not attack them back and you do go to the wilderness on accident for some reason, do not attack anything. If you get killed, you will at least keep the three most expensive items in your body slash backpack. Be very careful with this. Wilderness is not fun. Aside from the area loot, or uh, I'm sorry, the tele other option, we're going to go ahead and do the area loot now. Area loot, in my opinion, is very important. Um, it stops you from having to run around, especially if you're trying to AFK. So what we're going to do now is settings, settings again, and we're going to go over to the actual uh, area loot control screen. So down here at item drops, we have the loot system. First thing we're going to do is we're going to enable the area of loot. Once you enable this, I would strongly suggest hotkeying it. How to hotkey area loot is in your controls. Once you get into your controls, you're going to want to scroll down. Go past camera, go past action bar, all the way at the very, very bottom, I believe, of action bar, there is area loot. It is on the right hand side. 
Whenever you do that, you're just going to put it on whatever keys you prefer. I highly suggest you do not put it for the same as a spell or ability if you use it or as food or anything like that because if you do not press down the shift if you are using shift like myself and all it hits is Q you will consume that food that potion or you will cast that spell it makes it kind of difficult for uh, trying to be efficient when you have to turn off the spell or now you're out of a piece of food so now that we've gone through key toggling the area loot we're gonna go back to the gameplay tab where it shows the loot beams and the area loot system. Um, I just want to show you a few of my settings on this. I have my loot beam set for 550. Basically what that means is if there's any item or if the entire stack at equals 5,500 for me it will glow. The reason why I do this is because a lot of the drops that I actually keep when I'm out fighting is 5k drops or more mainly because bones if you're not using a bone crusher or ashes or something along those lines they're not really prominent to you making money with your skill so I set a boot leap loot beam to it go to it if I need to most of the time though I'm just using the area loot with the area loot the loot beam area loot system combo I'm going AFK on my other accounts and oh look I see there's a shiny thing on my screen let me go check to see what that is real quick before it disappears um, some of the drops when I'm AFKing I just don't care about I'm just there for the experience and I'm working on one or two other accounts so if there's no loot beam I don't care about it if you don't want to do that you don't have to it just makes some things easier if case you are doing multiple accounts so now that we've gone over the tele other options the area loot and the ribbon we're gonna be going to trails basically this is gonna be under gameplay messaging and social and friends list. If you check this box, no one can follow you in RuneScape. I do not mean the right click follow option. This is something that they put in the game called a friend trail. If you are friends with someone, and I don't know if they have to be friends back with you or not, but if you're friends with someone and you right click on their name in their friends list, like so, you can put trail. Now if you click trail and they are not have their settings off and their settings are on to allow you and this box is not checked it will put dots on your screen leading directly to that person as long as you're in the same world as them this is not always a bad thing this can help whenever we're trying to find people or figure out where things are at however some PKers use this to find people in RuneScape and then try to lure them only reason why I have mine off if you guys do not feel comfortable with people following you around a RuneScape, I suggest turning this off as well. Other than the trials, the last thing that I want to go over, which is by far, in my opinion, the best quality of life thing that I can show you right now, is going to be the action bars. I know you guys already have your main action bar here. I have two additional. And if you look at my two additional action bars, you can see that I have mainly my prayers on here. I have my invention thing, I have some items that I keep with me almost all the time along with my high alp. These are going to be the demon slayer and the dragon slayer basic abilities that you get from codexes. This is a special ability. I have some other scaling things here, bladed dive, surge, basically everything that I would like to use all the time or that I hardly ever use but I don't want to switch through my main spell book or my main combat bar for, I slap up here. Emergency teleports, etc, etc. The reason why I do this is because if you have 14 combat slots and five of them are going to be non-combat abilities, then you have five slots of DPS that have vanished on your action bar. I will make my action bar extreme DPS only and then use all of these abilities up here whenever I need to use Surge or what have you. I keybind these separately than these ones down here. To keybind these, all you have to do is right click on whatever box it is and customize keybind. Once you do that it will automatically bring you to this tab. You can set these up however you want or you can automatically open up your settings, not automatically, or you can open up your settings, go to controls and select these manually. I myself prefer to right click on these and then set them afterwards. It's up to you, it's just because it's a better visual representation for me when I do this. Easiest way to get to these settings is settings settings then we're gonna to go to gameplay after you click on gameplay 
we're going to click on the combat and action bar. In combat and action bar, this not only allows you to add extra combat bars, but it allows you to select more or less. Down here, I now only have five. I myself like 13. Here's my 13 bars. You move this, you get more actions that are automatic. If you do not use EOC and you use Legacy, then this will not affect you because this is automatic abilities. It is only for E uh, Revolution. Sorry. Now, if we go down to the ex action bar, it has four additional slots here. These four additional action bar slots mean that you can throw more action bars around your screen. I have action bar 8 and action bar 4 up here because these are my clutter bars. These are just my prayers, my food, etc., etc. I select one, put it up here, drag it where I want on the map, on the screen, the HUD, select my second one, throw it up there. Some of you will not see the need for two of these, some of you might want four. Whatever you feel is the best for your screen and does not clutter up your screen and is best efficiency for you, go ahead and add them. Other than those few things that I have shown you, I want to show you the action bar binding. In action bar binding, what I have done, not on my main, uh, is you go through and you select your main bar. This bar here, number 11, is my range bar. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to find my setup for number 11. Here we go. And I'm going to set it for ranged. And it's going to be a two-handed range. So now whenever I select my ranged weapon, it'll automatically send me to the setup number 11 for ranged two-handers, as long as it's ranged two-hand. Now my other action bar here is number 10 for my melee. I'll go up to my 10 and I'll change this to a 2H melee because I use a two-hander. And then my magic is number 9. So I'll go to number 9 and I will change that to two-handed magic because it's a two-handed magic. And basically now whenever I select a weapon that does one of those styles, this will automatically send me to that action bar. Other than that, um, I don't think there's too many other things that I can show you guys on this video. You guys have a great day, and I'll talk with you again soon.